Brazil. Um, in terms of the defense as a whole, as you go through and go to the bye week, where would you um, evaluate where you are at right now? Uh, we're in a good spot, but I think we need to continue to get better. There's still um, a lot of stuff to fix, so I think if we can fix those things and just keep getting better, we can do some good things. In terms of stuff you have to fix, what do you th think the biggest uh, sh uh, sh strength is right now is in the weakness? The biggest strength, uh, the biggest strength is I would, I would say like the amount of people we got that can play and come in and play at a high level and. Um, the biggest uh, weakness is probably we need to communicate better and make sure everybody on the same page. Can you talk about the depth on the defense. How would you rate the depth of your position specifically? Um, it's, we got a lot of depth at uh, linebacker. We got um, Tay, uh, Nakobe, uh, Channing, McBride. We got a lot of people that can play. Uh, the younger guys are learning fast, Ryan and uh, Tresman. So we got a lot of guys that can play. Can you? It, it, it appears to me that, that Tay is flashing a lot more. I mean, you just see him standing out and making big plays. Can you talk about, you were a linebacker when you came here, he wasn't, about the progress you've seen him made. Is it is, is he taking it to another level, I guess? Is, yeah, I mean, he, Tay's a hard worker. He does what he's supposed to do every day, so it's not surprising. With Nakobe, he's been sort of battling an ankle injury. What have you seen of him in that first sort of month of the season, and how sort of healthy is he now? Um, I think he's back now. I think he didn't really get healthy until, like, maybe Murray State or really maybe even Notre Dame week. But, um, you know, he's battled through adversity, and, you know, he hasn't let him, you know, affect him. How hard is that as a linebacker, knowing that you might not be able to fully trust your feet or your ankles? Um, trying to hold up while you're going out there trying to make plays. Uh, I mean, it, it sucks, but I mean, you got to be able to push through it. How are you feeling health-wise this year? I know it's been it's it's a tough position you play, and you've had to overcome a lot the last couple of years. Uh, it's fine. Uh, you know, I just keep getting treatment and do what I'm supposed to do every day, and whatever happens, happens. You talk about communication. Kind of, that's how something you need to work on. How much is that on you to uh, you know improve that? Uh, it's definitely on us as linebackers to, you know, especially like you know, Notre Dame, I remember, you know, obviously it was really loud. So hand signals are key in that game to, you know, JR know what I'm doing and I know what he's doing and Richard and with Tay, the D-line, because they couldn't hear us. So the signs, the hand signals definitely help. What are some of the challenges of Tennessee this week? I guess you start with you're not 100% sure who's going to play quarterback or what have you. What are some of the challenges that the balls bring to you? Uh, the, you know, they got some good players on offense, especially those two running backs, Chandler and Gray. Uh, so, you know, it'll be a task stopping those two. And, you know, they got some good receivers, Jennings, uh, Callaway. So they got some guys who can make some plays. And, and if you're not doing your assignment, they can, you know, make some plays. My, how much did you play in the last game at Tennessee? Oh, I got in at the end. In, in, in Knoxville? Yeah. And then about it. last year, how much were you? Uh, I was in a pretty, pretty good bit. Okay. In, in as far as what you remembered about last year's game? Um, I remember Tennessee. They, they didn't give up no matter what the score was. Close or not, they didn't give up. And, um, you know, they came out and they fought. They played us hard just like they're supposed to and like that their coach should do. You mentioned their receivers. Uh, Tyson's obviously been banged up. Uh, is that a concern? You think DJ uh, did handle himself pretty well in the last game? Yeah, I mean, you know, he gave up a ball or two. He even had a pass interference, but it didn't affect him. Uh, he did what he was supposed to do. He came back, and at the end of the game, he, him and Mark Webb made the play to, you know, steal the game. Do you uh... – You've played up there before. Do you get excited about different SEC venues? I mean, regardless of the team that's in it, I mean, Neyland Stadium, it's the biggest, I guess, in the SEC, right there by the river. Do you, do you enjoy that kind of stuff? Do you pay attention to that? I mean, I didn't even know it was the biggest. It doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> Let's just play. Yeah. You mentioned getting in at the end of the Tennessee game two years ago. This was a blowout. What kind of benefit was it? the end of some of those games to get reps and oh, yeah. do late game reps when the game is no longer in doubt. Do they help you develop at all? Or? Yeah, especially my freshman year. I mean, I had never played. I don't think that was like, I think that was like my first SEC game on the road. So it was, you know, 
it was still fun. You know, I still had fun. And it didn't matter to me whether the score was close or not. I just wanted to play. What's the most important part for a player's development when you're in a game like that? Um, you know, just go out there and do what you're supposed to do and, you know, just cut it, cut it loose. Just seeing the, the speed of the game, even if it's 41 nothing or whatever it is, at that point, the, the speed of the game and, and the crowd is something that is new and you can. Well, the speed of the game wasn't new just because, you know, we go against good players in practice every day. You know, we got some of the best skilled players there is in the nation. So, you know, it wasn't really, you know, that big of a deal my freshman year. How much, it, it, I don't know if fun is the right word, but with, with this havoc and the activity in your fronts, how does it change your approach line? I mean, I guess you're going to play 100% regardless of the scheme, but can, what, what effect has havoc had? on your mentality and in the defensive mentality this year? Uh, I feel like um, if we can, you know, wreak havoc and cause a lot of negative plays for the other team, playing in their backfield, making getting the quarterback off the spot, then, you know, that gives us a higher percentage chance to win the game. Is there any, I don't want to say second guessing or any thoughts, but, you know, Jim Chaney is their offensive coordinator. He's lined up across from you. He's had guys lined up across from you in practice probably a lot. Is there any concerns about Chaney's knowledge of your defense or your tendency? I mean, no, because he, even if he had not been working here, he's been coaching forever. You know, he's seen everything. So, you know, he knows what he's doing. So, you know, it is what it is. You still got to play at the end of the day. No, like, there's never a perfect call. You just got to go out there and do your assignment and do what you're supposed to do. Not to put you on the spot here, but a uh, bill was passed yesterday in California. I don't know if y'all talked about it, about <laughs> players in the future getting paid uh, college athletes. Oh, for real? I ain't know it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, how would, how would student athletes use that to their benefit? You know? you know, I really don't even know. I ain't really looked at it. I ain't never hear about it until you just said it. So uh, that's great for California. You know, it really doesn't take effect down here. So that's good for them. But I guess it could <laughs> if, they, if the NCAA gets involved. Uh, would it be nice to have extra cash in your pocket at some point? Or I mean, yeah, it'd be cool, but mm, again, it's in California, so we can't really do much now. But it's a debate across the country about whether you guys should be able to benefit from, like, whether you should be able to do endorsements, sign autographs, that kind of thing. Like, a lot of the stuff that NCAA doesn't let y'all do now. Is that the kind of thing you think y'all should be able to do as athletes? Um, I'm not really a debate person. I just do what I'm supposed to do. So that's up for somebody else to debate. Curious to see who's going to try out a quarterback for them. Um, they got two good quarterbacks. You know, they both can do different stuff. Uh, obviously, Jared is, has more experience and can. You know, he's played against us before and played in big games against you know good opponents. So he knows what he's doing. So you know, I'm, we're prepared for both of them. And you know, we'll do what we're supposed to do. What did, if anything, what effect did the, did the Notre Dame game have on the team? Georgia before, Georgia after. What do you think would be some of the changes in the team? Uh, I think the Notre Dame game it let everybody know um, that we have to continue to get better to go where we want to go. And but the thing I love most is when you know when Tyler muffed the punt. Um, I like down nobody. You know, there was no finger point. You know, we, we almost got the stop, almost didn't count. But, you know, I just like how, especially on defense, we stuck together and, you know, we didn't let Tyler or anybody else get down on themselves for that. And then I guess I was just, I got to ask you about that Notre Dame tight end. Was it kind of like a where the heck did this guy come from feeling for you guys in the first half? Or did you know about the Cole Komet guy? That I mean, you know, they, this Notre Dame, they've always had good players. And, you know, he made plays like he was, like he's supposed to do. So it wasn't surprising. <coughs> Two more questions. You talk about finger pointing. Uh, what about when, when, when Camarda has a, a tough punt, like 25 yards or something like that? To guess, the same thing, let it roll off. Yeah, I mean, you, you saw it happen. We went out there and got a stop like we were supposed to do. So, you know, we prepare for a lot of different situations in practice. Every Friday, Coach Morales is showing us like different situations that happen, maybe in an NFL game or a past college game, to where this team, you know, messed up a certain situation. And we didn't let it affect us. We went out there and played. There was an MMA fight he said going one time. Was that involved? Did he mention that after the? Was that something you mentioned before, or am I just would not dream this? Yeah, he's not dreaming. He's talking about the MMA fight that he said he played the week in Notre Dame in the locker room. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah. we go. What about it? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was part of the perseverance that he oh. had. 
Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bonnie. Thanks, Bonnie.